Hi guys, it's She's Name Kay and today I am here at BSB for round nine at Alton Park and I am here with True Heroes Racing and they're going to answer your BSB related questions. So if that's of interest, stick around and stay tuned. So super professional, got my phone for questions. <laughs> right guys, so today I am here with Phil Spencer who is the founder of True Heroes Racing. For the viewers who don't know you guys, okay. who are you and what is your team about? So True Heroes Racing was formed in 2012. Mm -hmm. It was formed to use the sport of motorcycle racing to engage, infuse and bring back together the, the wounded, injured and sick UK service personnel and veteran community. Um, there's lots of projects out there helping our guys and girls, but we're really unique in that we use competitive motorcycle racing uh, to do it and, and all aspects of that. Awesome, good stuff. Um, so, who are your racers and what are they actually like around the paddock? <laughs> um, so over the 10 years that we've existed, we've had uh, many um, guys uh, involved in the racing aspect. Mm -hmm. For 2022, we've got two classes here at the BSB that we're running. So we're running two Suzuki GSX-R 1000s in the National Superstock class. Yep. And they are ridden by Royal Navy veteran um, Dave Sellers and Army veteran Dave McKay. We've also got three Ducati V2 Panigales that we're running in the Ducati Triopsons Cup. Uh, and they're ridden by uh, serving Royal Marine Charlie White, serving soldier Leon Wilton and Army veteran um, Chris Ganley. Chris being a little bit unique in that the guy's only got one arm. Um, so pretty impressive competing at this level, competing at any level on a motorcycle with one arm. Um, so I've had a, a quick look at the Ducati there and I see there's like a few modifications yep. on it. I'm assuming that's going to be Chris. That's Chris's, yeah. So he's got no left arm. Um, it's amputated wow. uh, above the elbow. And so modifications have been kept um, minimal because this is racing and bikes will get broken. So yes. there's no point putting any expensive gold plated parts on them that are going to cost us thousands of pounds every time it goes down the track. And at the same time, we've needed to keep within the rules um, for the class because mm -hmm. it's a stock class, so you're not allowed performance enhancements. Mm -hmm. So the main modification on there is the clutch. Uh, as you'll have seen looking at the bike, there's no clutch lever on the left-hand handlebar. It's been moved over to the right. Um, and we've used a very, very simple, um, it's a pit bike front brake system because it's a hydraulic clutch on the Panigales. We've used a pit bike um, front brake lever and, and rid that and the hose goes down and operates the slave cylinder for the hydraulic clutch. Um, obviously we couldn't take the Ducati OEM part from the left hand handlebar and turn it upside down and put it yeah. under the side, it just wouldn't work. But that part costs us £35, so I'm not giving him permission but if Chris breaks them I can fix them all day long. It's not the end of the world. No, no. Awesome. Okay, so next question. Bikeshare is a channel sponsor of mine, and I know that Bikeshare also support your team's yep. racing endeavours. How do Bikeshare support True Heroes Racing? So we've been involved with Bikeshare for a number of years. Um, they're one of our financial supporters um, through the brand marketing aspect of what we do. Um, but they also uh, help to promote who we are through their social media channels. And they did a really great um, video uh, documentary about us back in 2017 um, that had uh, you know, huge, huge uh, interest on, on social media, on YouTube and things like that. Um, so yeah, been involved with us, supporting us as, as best they can. Uh, and we're hoping to, to do more and more with them as the year goes on this year. Good stuff. So the thing that is lit up social media at the moment is the stunning wrap that was done on the bike in honour of Her Late Royal Majesty. So whose idea was that and how long did it take to actually come together and get it done? Um, so I can't take the credit for that. It was Dave McKay, our Stock Thousand rider. Uh, obviously, we were at Snetterton on setup day on the Thursday when the note, the news broke, unfortunately, of the Majesty of the Queen passing away. Um, as a group of, of military people and veterans, uh, we felt we needed to do something to honour her at that time. Uh, and as a motorcycle race team, that seemed like the obvious thing. And Dave just came to me and said, "We need to do something on one of the bikes." Fortuitously, um, Del uh, Dowds from Sublime Designs, who does all the wraps on our bikes, was actually set up 
in the awning next to us supporting another rider and um, his workshop and headquarters was only 20 minutes from Stetterton so we literally went looking for Dell, dragged him into the awning right yeah. where's your laptop sit down we need to do this and um, we created the design on that Thursday night um, at that point we didn't know if the event was still going to run it was obviously very much up in the air of what was going to happen um, we created the design on the Friday morning when we got notification that the event was going to run um, with respect paid to the Queen that was it you know that the lads stripped a set of our fairings with our livery from this year off of it Dell took them away uh, printed and, and wrapped them for us and brought them back and the stock thousands at Snetterton only had a single race on the Sunday so that was you know the obvious point to put it on so we put them on the bike Saturday night kept them under wraps and then Sunday morning unveiled them to the public and the interest was immense as you can imagine it was you know really really um, heartfelt at the time what was going on and uh, and then Dave raced with them on on the Sunday afternoon um, and that's it, you know, that was what it was designed to do. Us as military people and veterans showing our respect in our unique way. Um, the interest w was immense in what obviously, and we've had people, you know, two weeks later coming up here saying, oh, we've got the fairings, we've got the fairings. But it was never going to be something we were going to continue to run. Um, we did a photo shoot at Anglesey last weekend where um, the grassroots element of the team were competing with North Gloucester. And that was to capture an, an image we were really wanting to do, which is, uh, as you're aware, the military going down the sun and in the morning we will remember, and we captured that sunset image uh, and that's gone out and again that's just been, you know, a phenomenal response to, to that. But um, those fairings have been taken off the bike, they're safely wrapped up and in storage. Oh, that's good. So. Okay, so the nitty gritty of BSB. What licence do you need to race in BSB and how do you get it? So, um, depending on the class you're, you're going into, there's different levels. Obviously, this is the national championship, yes. so the vast majority of the classes you require a national level ACU license. Um, the Ducati Triopsons Cup has always been seen as an entry class into BSB, so that you just need what they call a clubman license. Um, so, you start off, you do your ACU assessment and get given permission to apply for your licence. The ACU then check your medicals and give you a licence and you start as a novice with your bib. Um, ten races at different circuits, you can lose your bib. That then steps you up to clubman and then it's the same again but you have to compete ten races within a certain percentage of the race winner's time to be able to claim those as signatures to upgrade to a national. Um, and then that's that's the levels you require. So for the stock thousands, mm -hmm. um, they've both got national licences. For the Tri Options Cup, you only need a clubman. Mm -hmm. Some of the lads have got national licences and, and some have got a clubman licence. Um, but that's kind of ties in with the grassroots programme that we started a couple of years ago. So you see the front of house stuff here at BSB, the high profile stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also running a grassroots programme with North Gloucester Road Racing Club where we're taking injured servicemen and teaching them. We're taking them through that exact process we just discussed there, getting them through the ACU assessment, getting them a race licence, getting them on track for the first time, getting them racing. Um, and Dave McKay, our stock thousand rider, uh, does that, he mentors that programme for us at, uh, at a club level. And that's great because not everyone's going to have the ability or experience to compete here at the British Superbike Championships. You know, like you said, it's the national level championships. You need a certain level of experience and ability to be able to come in here. And a big set of um, kahunas. Yeah, <laughs> certainly, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're growing our own, our BSB riders of the future, but we're also offering those an opportunity who maybe might never make it to this level, the opportunity to go out and race. Uh, and enjoy the sport and get something out of the sport like we do uh, and hopefully help them on their, their road to recovery. Amazing, good stuff. Right, so without going into too in-depth and into the nitty-gritty of things, what costs are associated with a race meet for a smaller team? Um, it's daunting as everyone Yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're running, uh, as you've seen, a huge setup here, huge. one of the biggest, yeah. if not the, the biggest single sort of um, team in the paddock. Mm. Um, so we're talking so serious funds. Um, serious funds. But, um, you know, the, the lads will tell you, I, I'm like a duck. If I walk, I squeak because yeah. I'm that tight. But I have to be because it's about spreading the support we get to offer oh. as many opportunities as we can across the board. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, you know, racing at this level, um, like any kind of racing, there's entry fees to pay. Mm -hmm. But the entry fees are very comparable to a club level. Yeah. The big, big step up in cost is your tyres. Um, yeah. You're going through a lot of new tyres. At a club meet, you know, we, when we do the grassroots programme, we use the scrubs that we generate from BSB yeah. for the weekends at the club racing. The occasional new tyre, depending on where we are. But when you're at BSB, you need to put new tyres on because a new tyre can give you half a second, three quarters of a second, a second, depending on where you are. And everyone's putting new tyres on, so you've got to put so new tyres on, otherwise you're on the back foot yeah. to be competitive. So that's the biggest, biggest bill, you know, is the tyre bill. And um, have you guys noticed like an increase in price of tyres, given everything that's going on in the world, or is it...? Uh, the tyre prices, um, yeah, you know, everything's gone up. Um, fuel, entry fees, diesel for the trucks, everything's going up, you know, that, that's inevitable with the, the world economy as it is, but, um, you know, the prior prices, uh, they are competitive, um, they're subsidised to a degree because of the championship we're in and, and it's, there's um, they're the control tyre, so we have to purchase them yes. um, from the suppliers here, so there's, a, you know, the price is, is competitive to what you would be able to go and buy that tyre in, you know, in a local tyre dealer in town. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so this might be slightly controversial, maybe, maybe not. Ooh. What are your thoughts about Ducati tri options changing, like to the BMWs, the F900R Cup? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ask the wrong person. So, oh, okay. we, we've been involved in the Tri Options Cup since 2015. Um, mm -hmm. For me, because of the nature of the riders that I'm bringing into the championship, yeah. um, a single make championship is cost effective, it's mm -hmm. a level playing field, and it works for the calibre of riders that we've got. Mm -hmm. um, we love the Ducatis, you know, I love the V2. It, yeah. For me, it's returned to the classic 916 styling, the single-sided mm -hmm. swing arm. Um, we've just invested quite heavily with our motorcycle dealer sponsor, Laguna Motorcycles, on, on these new bikes. So it's a real shame it's coming to an end. Um, the problem I have is the BMW class is, um, you know, what I've seen on paper, a, a very similar type of championship, single mate championship, cost effective racing, um, from talking to Steve Plater who's involved with it, they're looking at the same sort of restrictions to keep the cost down, you know, maximum number of tyres you can use, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of using the model of the Triumphsons car and the triple challenge that was before that with the Triumphs, which is great, but it causes me a particular conflict because my motorcycle dealer sponsor don't sell BMWs. Oh, that's frustrating. So that is frustrating, but um, yeah, we've got to see where we go, but we're, we're hoping to continue with the V2s. We've Mm -hmm. As I say, used the Ducati since 2015. Yes. We really understand those bikes and the, the the moderation, the modifications that have come from the 899 Panigale, the 959, now the V2. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at the the Super Sport concept that's being discussed, and there's more detail to come out about an Evo Carp and this sort of stuff. So uh, uh, we'll see we'll see where that goes. But yeah, you know, it's um, I've not looked too much detail yeah. into the BMW class because mm -hmm. of the fact that it's not something we're specifically looking at at the moment but what I've seen on paper it, it looks like cost effective racing in the same model as, as the Triumphsons Cup is. So whereabouts in the championship are you at the moment and what are next season's goals? Um, because of who True Heroes Racing are, we're a little bit different. So results driven is not our, our aim. Uh, the results we get are the benefits that the guys and girls involved get out of being you know, here and being involved in the, in the project. Mm -hmm. um, so grid results uh, aren't something that, that we are particularly focused on. And you know, the, I don't give my riders a hard time if they no. end up in there. But um, we're, we're holding our own. Um, the Super Stock 1000s, that's, you know, a really, really competitive class. Yeah. You're competing against some of the superbike teams who are running a stock thousand rider, you know, Alex Olsen for FHO BMW, for instance, yeah. um, and some ex superbike riders stepping down and mm -hmm. superbike riders of the future. So, um, a really, really intense class. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're grateful for OMG. Um, Superbike team who've given us the two Suzukis to race wow. uh, and, and the guys do their best but um, you know we're, we are not up yeah. the front we're not at the sharp end you know we're, we're not, not, we're not really. no that's it we're, you know we're not we're not competing with Billy McConnell and Alex Olsen for podium finishes it's um but you know the Suzuki is a strong bike mm -hmm. um, Charlie Nesbitt's proven that Peter Lee this year mm -hmm. so it's still a good bike uh, and you know we're I say grateful to OMG and Alan Gardner for, for providing us those bikes to use um, 
Ducati a little bit more competitive because it's um, a bit more of a level playing field um, and the, the rider caliber is a little bit um, lower down because it's that entry class into BSV. Still some really, really strong riders in that class. You know, um, David Shoebridge, Tom Tunstall, ex superbike rider, um, you know, uh, at the far end. But um, yeah, you know, Charlie and Leon and Chris, this was the first year on these V2s, mm -hmm. and they're really coming to get into grips with the bikes as it's, as it's come along. Um, Charlie and Leon obviously pushing up there, uh, points finishing. Um, with Chris, it's a different setup, as you can imagine. The guy's only got one arm. Challenges and uh, expectations are, are vastly different. Um, for Chris, the challenge we set him at the beginning of the year was to qualify. You know, you've mm -hmm. got to be within 110% of the pole sitters' time in qualifying. Um, and you know, David Shoebridge has been going out this year and breaking lap records, so wow. it's been making the challenge even di difficult for Chris. Um, but he's done it on a, on a number of occasions. Um, you know, the highlight being World Superbikes, which was the first time he did it this year. Um, you know, to get on the grid at the World Superbikes wildcard round that the Triumphs did at Donington Park earlier in the year was was great. And, to have, as I said earlier, you know, a lad with one arm racing a motorcycle in this paddock just shows that people suffer life-changing injuries, but they don't have to be life-limiting. You can go out and do what it is you want to do. If someone's told you you can't do it, we're proving that you can. And it doesn't have to be motorcycle racing. It can be anything that, um, that you've been told, oh, you can't do that anymore. Um, it so. is hugely inspiring. Yeah, you know, and it, I, I, don't, I still don't know how he does it. You know, you look at his bike and there's foam blocks stuck yeah. on the bits and pieces, and that's how he braces to change direction mm -hmm. because he can't counter steer in both yeah. directions because he's only got right hand pushing yeah. on the bar. So, um, you know, his, his riding style is completely unique, and, mm -hmm. and we've seen that with the, the, um, the riders with disabilities, that that happens every time. Their, their riding styles are really yeah. unique. We've, with Chris, we've had to tell him, stop leaning the bike over so much. We've put wet knee sliders on all the time rather than yeah. the dry. So it's a bit so, so, Yeah, because they're a bit <laughs> thicker. Uh, to, his lean angles are just obscene, really obscene. You know, um, chicken strips, no sign of chicken strips on his tyres. Um, but obviously what that means is he's got the bike lent over more, therefore it's slightly longer before he's getting it upright and on the power. Up yeah, there. exactly. Um, so we're trying to modify his riding style slightly to, to give him even more performance and, and potential. Amazing. So in terms of goals for next year, I'd imagine just to carry on as you're, you're doing and just carry on in the manner of which you've been going? Carry on as we're doing, no, no, never, oh, no, never, no. never, never, never. Uh, I'm always looking for the next penny, the next oh, fiver. I, I want to do more, always want to do more. Um, <laughs> you know, the challenge that um, Lizette, our operations manager and Sam, the team manager, have is it's raining me back in. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm the passion, I'm the drive. I'm like, there's only five bikes in the morning here at BSB. I want six, I want seven. Yeah. Um, it, the more opportunities we can offer, the better it is. That's what you know. My drive is is to get more and more guys and girls from the the WIST and the um, veteran communities involved in what we're doing. Um, so you know, next year, yes, you know, we're we're still looking at the options as you mentioned earlier. The Triumphs Cup mm -hmm. coming to an unfortunate end. Um, OMG have already committed to supporting us again with the Suzuki's and running them again in the Stock 1000. So we're just working through our options with the, the three Panigales that we've got at the moment uh, and see what other options might exist to increase the footprint we have at BSB and, and continue to grow the grassroots programme that we're running as well at, at club level. Cool. Right, well, I have one final question for you, <laughs> and that is how can people support you? So obviously from like a fan perspective, and maybe even from a future sponsorship perspective. So, um, both fronts, social media, you know, is, is mega. We've got every channel you can think of under the sun. Um, Facebook is our primary site, and obviously that allows you the opportunity to message directly as well. Uh, and we've got more followers on Facebook than most of the Superbike teams, yeah. which is just mental. That's, that's um, awesome. uh, uh, but that's the, the support the public have given us over the 10 years. You know, when I first broached into BSB in 2013, we didn't quite know how things were going to react. We knew at the time that the military was still in the public eye back then yeah. uh, and the support was immense, you know, and, and that's dropped off a little bit from the wider military perspective. Um, obviously, there's bits and pieces going on, but we're not on daily operations like we were back then and thankfully not in a position where we've got guys being repatriated on an almost daily yeah. basis um, but those guys and girls are still exist. They've got their lives ahead of them. You know, a lot of them were 
18, 19, 20 year old guys that lost limbs and have got major life changing injuries. So the people are out there and that's the frustrating thing for me is I want to help more people um, but I'm held back financially so from a public support get on there show all our social media sites for those messages and you know Merchandise. Yep, yeah, so you'll you have seen the shop here. Um, it's often commented on that there's more fans in the BSB paddock wearing our merchandise than they are wearing Superbike Team merchandise, which is great. You know, we, we, we keep the price down low because we want people to support us, but not, um, you know, really you know, make a lot of money out of it. It does help, don't get me wrong, um, but it's about promoting the brand, awareness of the brand, and making more people uh, aware of who True Heroes Racing are and, and what we stand for. And then from a sponsorship perspective, I'm always begging more sponsors. The door <laughs> is always open. <laughs> yeah, very much so, yeah. Um, you know, we've got contact uh, messages through the website, mm -hmm. through again, through social media, as we messaged, and... Um, yeah, if you're interested in any way, shape or form in trying to help us out, please get in touch, you know. We, we work support packages from all the levels, um, you know, people want to help us because who we are, but not necessarily have those big multinational company budgets to throw lots of money at us, but every bit helps. You know, a, a set of tyres is 250 odd quid, um, you know, and we go through, like we said earlier, a lot of sets of tyres. So one set of tyres, it helps. Um, you know, it's um, about getting as many people involved as, and as you've seen from the, the boards and the team where we've got, you know, lots of people that help us at a variety of different levels and we tailor packages to suit what, what people are looking for and, and what they've got available to enable them to help us. So yeah, please, please get in touch. Please get in touch. Just, yeah, pick the phone up, send <laughs> yeah. the email, Just get it done. <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today, Phil. It's no been problem. really enlightening um, from, uh, you know, just my general perspective and uh, I think there's a lot of stuff to be learned from what you have to say. So, thank you. Taste, yeah, so thank you very much. No, thank thanks you. Cheers. Cheers.